Hello traders, Gary Wagner here, just about one o'clock in Honolulu, six o'clock in New York. It is Monday, December 28th, 2020, and this is the daily report for gold and silver. Mixed bag in the precious metals markets with silver closing higher today and gold closing lower. We'll cover both of those metals in detail as we did send out a trade alert. We'll talk about that when we pull up our technical studies, but first to closing prices today. Traders, yesterday afternoon, I did send out a trade alert to enter long positions in gold and silver futures Forex along with SLV and GLD. My primary thought process behind it was that it was just announced that President Trump had signed off on a combination bill that included expenditures of $900 billion for fiscal stimulus or aid along with an additional $1.3 trillion to continue to fund the government and to avoid a shutdown which would have occurred on Tuesday had this legislation not gone through. The initial move in gold was to the upside. I watched the markets as it traded at around 1885 and began to move higher. I actually sent out the trade alert when gold was trading at 1890. That's where we entered our trade. The market moved to new highs above 1900, which was 1904 intraday. However, it was not able to sustain it. It backed off of that and actually closed negative to the tune of $6, with gold currently printing at $1,877.20. We will go over the trade in detail when we look at some charts. Silver was another thing that we recommended entering from the long side. Traders taking that call did get in below current pricing. Silver closed up 51 cents at 26.42, and that's a net change of almost two full percent. We bought the open of SLV, and the market itself opened at 24.67. We also bought the open of GLD, which opened at 177.26. And all of today's action in the precious metals markets occurred concurrently with a dollar that was in essence unchanged, down 0.03%. 90.225 but really the big surprise today was bitcoin futures we are looking at the chicago mercantiles exchange it is a five coin contract and as you can see that gained thirty two hundred ninety five dollars it is at twenty six thousand nine hundred and eighty dollars per coin a net gain today of almost fourteen percent and traders, I invite you to look at the Bitcoin commentary that is done by Joseph Wagner. And if you look at your top of the screen, you will see three basic buttons, gold, Bitcoin, and charts. By clicking the Bitcoin button, of course, that will allow you to read his current commentary as well as his proper action. He has been long Bitcoin since, I believe, December 17th and moves stops up accordingly on three occasions. But I invite you to look at that yourself in the members section. Let's take a look at our technical studies. Traders, this first chart that we are looking at is a daily candlestick chart this of course of february gold we can see that in reality it is being defined especially today with support at the 50-day moving average that is this green line it comes in at 1871.30 i believe the low today was 1873 and then this blue line here which represents the 100-day and also pretty much matches up precisely with the high and the low of the day. In other words, it traded to the high of the 100-day moving average, and then it traded to the low of the 50-day moving average. Currently, we have the 100-day moving average at 1906.30, and the high today, I believe, was 1904. Nonetheless, I believe that we got a strange reaction to the passing of the fiscal stimulus bill, which means that they're allocating or printing more dollars, and the $1.3 trillion on top of that to increase our budget deficit to continue funding the government. 
it might be that a little bit of the pizzazz of the safe haven aspect of gold was deflated due to the, the tremendous move in Bitcoin. We had a neutral dollar, so it certainly didn't go into the dollars. And we certainly can say that with equities trading to all-time record highs in terms of the three major indexes, we had a flight to risk on in terms of the preferred asset investment to allocate, at least for today. Realize, secondly, this is a shortened trading week with the market trading a half a day on Thursday, and then it will be closed on Friday. So we can expect light volume. We certainly got that today with only 83,000 contracts traded today on the February gold contract. We currently have our stop, which is at 1860. In other words, what we're doing is we're putting it well below the 50-day moving average. I'm certainly not recommending that we move that stop. And we certainly can say that we have resistance at 1900, 1904 being the high today, but 1900 is that first level. And then we've got this full band that we drew in months ago, which is right above the record high, and it comes in at about 1920. So what we want to see is the gold first break above 1900 on a closing basis, break above the 100 day moving average, and then finally above the 1920 area, the former record high, once, or I should say, if we can see that, then I certainly believe that we will make a play for various tops that have come in recently, and this is at 1940 here, and this particular one is at 1980. I think that that is going to be where we get strong resistance if the market does continue to rise and stop today's fall, and then, of course, the all-time record high at 2,088. Traders, maintain your current long position in gold futures as well as Forex. Maintain your current stop. We also recommended the initiation of a long position in silver futures. We are looking at the continuous contract. This basis, the most active March contract, currently at 2641. We entered our trade just below that, and traders taking our silver recommendation got in at 26.31. So you have about 11 cents on that trade. We recommended placing a stop at 25.25, and our recommendation is to maintain your current long position in silver along with your current stop. Now, there is quite a different scenario that we're looking at in silver when we compare it to gold, and that is today's market move actually opened at and closed above the 0.618% retracement, which comes in at 2614. And this is a rather long retracement going back to the record highs when silver traded near $50 down to the lows at around 11. And to really view that, we need to convert our daily into a monthly chart, which I have just done. And when we do that, you can see where the top or the beginning of this Feb retracement starts, which is, which is at these record numbers coming in at about $50 in 2012 and concludes at the beginning of 2020 when we saw market forces taking silver just below $12 per ounce. You can see that we broke through the 61.8% retracement today. It looks a lot smaller, of course, on our monthly chart. If we can build a good base at, say, 2650, the next real target of major resistance for silver would not occur till approximately $31 per ounce. However, to look at the interim levels of resistance, we obviously need to go back to our daily chart. We can see this top that comes in at around $28 per ounce right here, and then just above $29 per ounce. So those would be the different upside areas or targets that we would look for silver to have the potential to trade to. We will cover SLV, and GLD in detail tomorrow. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. We will talk to you tomorrow for the next daily update and review. Bye-bye.